Well, would you look at the time? It's time to stream for nobody. It's me, Scott. Hi. How are you? Um, <clears throat> it's a beautiful Sunday morning. I made a nice, simple little breakfast, and uh, I feel like I've got some work to do. We're like a little overwhelmed with some projects, but <clears throat> feeling pretty good about this one. After the stream yesterday, I thought more about it, and I'm pretty into the web-based approach to this for a couple reasons. Reason one, it's pretty easy to prototype, and I've been doing uh, Tone.js stuff recently, so like relatively fresh in my mind. Been doing a fair amount of JavaScript, so at least it's like a language that's relatively fresh in my mind. Um, <clears throat> it delivers well for remote client review in that it's just like a website that I can be like, hey, here's the prototype for this, try it out. And it's way easier than like trying to send builds or whatever, um, which is nice. It's last night I tested on even a Raspberry Pi 3 running Chromium, running it. It seems to run well. It ran all night. It seems to hold up okay. Um, and then I looked at this thing called Puppeteer, which is a thing from Chrome that lets you control a browser sort of from Node and potentially even run it headless. And so even if I decide I don't need a screen for this, I could have Node controlling it, Node talking to like Network or Raspberry Pi, I'm, I'm sorry, or, or Arduino or whatever hardware, maybe even over GPIO, whatever. Um, and then talking straight to the browser or making the browser connect to a web service. I don't know exactly, but um, it feels like a pretty tidy package and platform as far as a way to deliver a thing that's gonna run efficiently on a Raspberry Pi. Now, you know, there's definitely a lot of overhead there, like running Chrome versus running just some bare bones, whatever, pure data or Python or C sound or, or whatever. Um, but I kind of feel like the net gain here, uh, from ease of development and delivery and all that stuff is worthwhile. Now it could be a thing that happens is like, you do a prototype in kind of a simple way to prove out the concept and then you go do the hard version. So I do that with hardware all the time. Like you do the, the easy version is like your laptop plugged into the Arduino. And then later you gotta like, do your own PCBs and whatever, 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 make things more complicated. But um, anyway, summary there is I actually feel like one, I feel like Tone.js was certainly the right choice for prototyping, but it may actually be the way that I want to deliver this project, I think, I think. Because like a web browser gives you an easy way to make noise and an easy way to draw things on screen, um, ish. It's not like quite as good. I mean, we could use uh, whatever, Pixie, Pixie.js or 3.js or something if we want a uh, graphics framework to use. Um, still, if I wanted something more complex, I would definitely want a real game engine, which is something else we could look at. But for now, knowing that I think the ideal scenario there's, is there's not a screen on this thing, this this installation piece. So thinking about it, thinking about it. Anyways, this is where we left off yesterday. And I, again, I did a little more work at end of day to... Uh, A little more work at the end of the day to try it out in Chrome on a Pi. Added a few more functions to like randomize stuff. So this was a 16 step. Still not crazy about where I landed with the grid. I feel like I'm missing something because I don't want to do this. I don't want to have to define a number of steps here. I want that to be in code only, 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 only. So that's kind of annoying. I mean, yeah, this is code, I guess. CSS counts, but I, I don't want to define it in two places. Is my is my point. Also, I just started this idea of like breaking the front end from the back end a little, or in a, in a better way, so that it's like the sequencer UI, every method associated with the UI. We kind of did this on the <clears throat> TwitchCon thing where. They just talked back and forth in a way that didn't seem super great. It was like they were very inter, intertwined, where the 
UI was directly calling the main sequencer and just maybe that's okay. And the sequencer was directly calling the UI, but I don't necessarily like those kinds of bi-directional dependencies. Um, what would maybe feel a little more appropriate, even though it's functionally the same, is that the sequencer has a direct reference to the sequencer UI, so it can set up that UI, um, but that then it subscribes to events from the UI to know when to do its thing. Uh, that starts to sound a little silly because then it's like, okay, well, you're like sending events, you're building an event system to send directly from one thing to another thing that already has reference to it. So like, I, but I'm trying to imagine the scenario once I do have a additional, <clears throat> so here's what I really need. I need a way to set all of these things that is totally UI independent, like randomized down here. It's just a method that is, uh, These are like control methods. And I, I'm gonna need a way for this test UI to call it and for a way for it to be called potentially over the network and for a way for it to be called potentially, not potentially, actually from, well, I guess that's still maybe over the network, maybe with that puppeteer, but basically so that I can have hardware that I'm activating that is triggering these things. And so like, let's just say there's four scenarios that you could use to trigger this thing. One of them is you click a button on the screen. One of them is you uh, click a physical button hooked into an Arduino. One of them is you click a thing that's sent over a web socket. And one of them is maybe that you hit a key on a keyboard. And so I want, I only want these, I want the functionality defined this way, totally separate from the UI. And right now it's intertwined, like the drawing of the UI and things like that. So I want to break that stuff out a little bit. All this stuff I want to break out a little bit. like these things just shouldn't be in uh, in this main sequencer class. I, I, I essentially don't want the sequencer class to know that the DOM exists, kind of. Like, it, it just shouldn't. So I'm just gonna start cramming stuff up here, I think. I still don't know exactly how I wanna do the communication. Definitely the easier answer, easiest answer is to just Feed the sequencer in in the constructor, but then that again gives you this weird bi-directional thing. But maybe we call that okay, right? For for the moment, um, something like this. The building of the grid needs to be a method in here. Although some of this stuff needs to actually be the result of a click, so this needs to be moved back to the main class. Um, I lose a. I guess I did. Um, what else? Syncing of these, the syncing of this stuff. We want, uh, yeah, passed in. I mean, syncing, the idea is that we sync the UI to the actual state of the sequencer. Um, trigger step. We still iterate through this. This is a draw. And so this is like, this is more like synchronize the whole grid because this is going to be, so we'll have like a sync step and sync grid, maybe. And again, this is the, the meaning of that is that we want to synchronize the state of the sequencer to the UI, but keep those things separate. So yeah, that, that'll be something like a sync grid. And I'm doing this, like this code's all broken for sure now. But I kind of want it where there's just no concept of a div. Again, I want like <clears throat> probably for this class, to, this class to not know anything about the DOM. So if we look down here, how are we doing so far? Maybe not too bad. I mean, everything's broken, but in terms of there no, being no concept of the DOM there, that actually seems good. We've got stuff that we do need to move back. So like 
this thing, for example, we need to call back up and say like, hey, this whole, this whole business, in fact, we need to trigger the cell. Um, okay, but in general, this, this, is, this feels okay. <clears throat> so, this will be something like this.ui equals new sequencer UI pass in this. Um, and then this will be So that's some weird like collections that we sample from, but I mean, that's okay for the moment. <clears throat> so things are certainly gonna be broken. Almost no point in doing this other than just to get an error to tell us where to even start. So we'll start with the first error and just, it'll be great. What's my problem? Still missing. So it's probably just all cut and paste errors. Okay, step values. Okay, so that is the first example. Yeah, we need an index here of what the like the active column is. Index here is so this is like the index of the active column. Um, that's not what was broken though. One thirty seven. Oh yeah, well these are that's just silly. That's just me not used to JavaScript classes. A message. Sync step. <clears throat> okay, 180. So that's in our UI class now. I did consider, I don't know, man. I did consider like doing the thing, doing the whole thing where you would type all this in TypeScript, like write it on TypeScript and then transpile and do all that stuff that you'd probably want to do for like a real web application. But I don't know, maybe we'll move. To, I don't I don't know. I don't, I, I don't think I need it right now. Um, 92. Yeah, so how do we want to do this? This is a little bit weird. Sync step is like, this is the index of the step, and then we need... like the active cell. So Because it needs to be something like, instead of this, that's actually, gosh, what is in there? That, that's which cell is active, right? So I think that is fair to call that that. And then, So in this case, it would be like, hey, you need to make sure that that is highlighted in the UI. Okay, so we are functioning, sort of. 
I think there's still some problems here. Like, yeah, what the value is. Cell values undefined 59. Okay, so that's a whole different thing. That's this whole business. And this isn't great. Like, I, we probably want, like, like, we built this grid. We should know what's in it. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, sub value is not defined. So that's 59. And that was this whole thing, the whole idea of clicking a cell. So really this whole method, we can't do. We need to say, like, I got clicked. This. We do have that per cell. So kind of here we need something that's like a activate cell or something. That's going to say And actually we can leave this here. leave all of that actually well we want this to not be here for sure just to say hey when you activate a cell make sure this is running because there's this stupid chrome thing that that kind of makes sense but you, you can't like just start playing audio somebody has to do something um, this is okay so now we need a like this dot sequencer dot activate cell and then it'll be Step in the cell, and then we'll leave the cell value to be figured out on the other side, which is potentially going to get a little confusing because we have a disconnect there, right? Maybe we shouldn't do that until it's time to. To play like <clears throat> yeah so this is gonna get the thing and then synchronize it I don't think I want to do this I think cell value I don't think we want cell value there okay first I think we just want to do the cell index. Yeah, okay. Well, I got to rethink this for a minute. Please be quiet, sequencer. Shh. Shh, 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 shh. Okay. Um, okay, let's think about this for a moment. What do we need to actually accomplish here? We need to... We're calling activate cell with this. So that's all good. Cell div, yeah, 141. So now down here, it 
Here's the thing I don't know though. So we have the step index and the cell index. And then so we need to say now that this dot step values step index is equal to what though? Like Because we're doing kind of this crazy double mapping, right? Like, where's the... So we need to do sort of both of these things. And I don't, but I don't, I don't know if I want to do it there. It's like, either we do this mapping, hmm. Let's just do it for now. At least it looks symmetrical. Nice. Okay, but wait, why don't you know about cell values? This dot cell values. And 141. Oh, is this a is this a this problem? Seems like it shouldn't be though. But maybe my this is bad in this case. Like my this might be the UI. Activate cell. I call that directly though. And I didn't complain about step values. Maybe because it has to evaluate. No, I have cell values. Wait, I see cell values right here. Cell values is not defined. So I logged this. What silly thing am I doing here? I have like some secret typo. Oh, this, that's my problem right in front of my face. Okay, so cell, sorry, cell value not defined, 53. I know this is not very exciting, but this is sometimes just how programming goes. Sync step. I think once the real cell index. Okay, now we can do this. So that's good. We somehow broke the playing, seemingly. Or my tabs just muted. Okay, so yeah, now that is because we didn't do this yet. So when we do our Draw trigger step. This draw, we need this dot UI dot sync grid, and this should synchronize the grid to say that hey, our active index is our active index. Funny how this mutes not immediately, like it takes a second to, to mute. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. That only took like 20 minutes to break it apart. There's nothing that enforces that. And I, again, I don't necessarily like this. Um, these will all be broken for sure. Because we need methods like set volume, set BPM. Oh, let's say value. So 
this is again a place that we will be cross calling sort of but that means this goes down here and this goes down here and then this will be this dot sequencer dot set volume value and this will be Set volume. Cool. now so this is something that's annoying and I still don't think I want to get into it but it is a thing that has made me kind of like like last time consider react but it would be kind of nice to not have to I, I, I guess it's fine like if you're thinking like model view controller sort of programming that the view is totally separate but it is a little annoying um, and I had some okay ways to do this We'll call this random button. But then we need to go back and like individually add these callbacks. What I would like to do, which wouldn't be too hard, is we would add markup to those. Like all these sliders, we would add this markup to them and then they would just do their thing. You still need to be a little specific though about what they call, which is a little annoying. But the way I did that last time was you already need something that's going to take in like text-based events. Like if stuff comes over the web or over a web socket to say like some text value, like randomize some way to say that and map it to a function. So if you already have that somewhere else, then, <clears throat> then it's okay. And then actually you make the UI talk to that thing. And then everything talks to this like command broker. That's sort of what we did last time and it worked okay. Um, but for now, let's do, we'll just be explicit about it. And I think that's a, a, a totally valid, what do we call it? Random button. It's like a approach to prototyping that I think is valid. Like sometimes the, the long way, the like explicit way, the, the seemingly inefficient way is actually the fastest way to get something functional. functional. Listener. And then once you <clears throat> once you've done that, you can look at the pattern that has emerged, and then like build the more robust system. But it's sometimes hard to build the robust system to start with because it's like you don't necessarily have you haven't defined the paradigms yet. Um, oh my gosh, it's Lily Bite. How are you doing, Lily? I am working on. I have a job to do this big, weird, interactive sequencer installation. And so I'm leveraging some of the sequencer stuff that we've done recently and building some new stuff to make this web-based sequencer that will then become a headless sequencer that runs on a Raspberry Pi with lots of custom hardware and knobs and dials and stuff that's fun. You're building a new overlay. I need, an, I need, a, I need some overlays. I feel like maybe that's the reason nobody comes to my stream anymore, is it's just expected that if you're a serious streamer, you have cool overlays. Is that my problem? Is that what I've been missing this whole time? I have, um, I have this overlay. Doesn't really count. Is it the weird times I stream? I know, but the whole world is, I feel like I stream all the, doesn't matter when I stream. I still, it's maybe just I'm a bad streamer, but I blame, I still blame the uh, science and technology schism, the like split uh, from just Twitch creative. I feel like I used to get lots more visitors back then. I know, Lily, I know, you're right. I just have, I just got a lot of work to do. But this is, see, this is my new strategy, is I'm, this is preparation for client work. 
and I'm getting a stream out of it. So that's the best. If I can, the more I can manage that, which typically I can't at all because there's like NDAs and stuff and I can't talk about anything. Um, but the more I can manage working while streaming, the better it is. How have you been? What have you been streaming? Are you still working on your game? Um, we were going to do this and we're going to do this. And yeah, so yeah, what was I saying? Like a general purpose control mechanism is definitely on on the horizon. We'll say when we click this that we just want to do this dot sequencer dot randomize. So there's already a method for that, I think. So it already works. Cool. Oh my gosh. You've been streaming Beat Saber? That's pretty funny. Oh man, I'm sorry I haven't stopped by your stream in a while. I would be definitely interested to see some one day one day game dev. I, I like that idea. I like the ideas of like tightly encapsulated one day challenges. Where am I actually using remap? So remap we're actually sort of just using as a UI method. So I'm just gonna cram that in here for now, even though it doesn't really belong there. So now volume works. Somehow our BPM is super not working. Oh, because I didn't, okay, well, there's a couple of problems here. One, this is the wrong method, first of all. Second of all, I didn't pass parameter, so that. Okay, cool, 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 cool. cool. Terrible games, I love terrible games. Rocky ship. Is this stream safe? Did you just did you just take over my computer? My whole stream crashed now. Oh no, what have I done? Lily, what have you done to me? Am I still streaming? Cause this says OBS has crashed. Wait, now it says wel welcome to the, so I have, that's pretty funny because I, I ran that and I got a whoops, OBS has crashed, but seemingly it's still running. Is this still me? Hello? I can't tell if the stream is running or, yeah. <laughs> Lily, did you just hack me? Did you just, did I get Lily bite malware? Yeah, I'm trying, okay, let's try it in Firefox. That was weird timing. I can't believe you've done this. I can't believe you've done this to me. <laughs> Chrome and Firefox. Okay. This is Firefox. It should work, right? Just, oh, out of memory. Hmm. Is this because my sequencer is open and Well, your game is bringing my computer to its knees. It's not ready for this. No, I think that's kind of a lie. WebGL context lost, please reload the page. I'm doing great over here. I have 16 gig of RAM, pretty sure. Oops. Why now my oh man my computer we're just doing great over here. Yeah, I have sixteen gig of memory. Seems like I should be okay, right? Unless like something just exploding and using all of it. Uh, VS Code's taking a lot. Firefox taking a lot. Chrome's eating everything. P 
Page unresponsive, stream manager, Twitch. Oh no, Lily, if you're talking, I might be missing what you're saying. Um, I might have to check in on Rocky Ship later. My music's not streaming anymore. Oh no, oh no, everything is exploding. Okay, deep breaths. Okay, if you're there, uh, just wait a moment because Chrome just crashed. This is very exciting. Does the new Chrome dashboard show me chat history? No, it just says welcome to the chat room. That's kind of lame. Okay, I still am somehow streaming even though OBS says that I'm not which is cool. I wonder if it's like, no, I was gonna say maybe just the browser plugin. Okay, I'm back and I can see chat. Lily tried to hack me. She crashed everything on purpose. I know she did with her malware game. This is an outrage. <clears throat> what did you, what, what does that game use? Is there some kind of front-end engine that it uses, or did you do everything from scratch? Like how would you use? I didn't know Godot built WebGL. Is that just what it always does? I don't think I knew that. I thought it built binaries, or does it just do both? I don't know much about it. <clears throat> Since I haven't seen you for a while, I haven't heard any Godot evangelism. I, I knew it would build binaries. I just didn't know you could build to WebGL and HTML5. Well, how about that? Okay, so I seem to be streaming again. I'm afraid to close this OBS crash window. Because I... Oh, it would be bad if my recording crashed, though. That would suck. Yeah. Um, let me check my. Hmm. Well, a little nervous that my recording might have crashed. I mean, I tend to restart this whole computer pretty regularly just because it's Windows. So I like try to restart once a day. But I guess I did run. I was running stuff overnight just to test. Uh, but I still probably close the browsers. Okay, I'm worried about the recording being broken. Hmm. I might split this into a part one, part two then, just because I'm, I'm nervous. So I think I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna click yes on this crash log thing and then see what happens. So if I disappear,